Cooper traveling from near and far to visit us here in Hollywood, where um, the Summit of the Americas is underway. I feel like people don't know about, but this is a major international meetup. Leaders from uh, North, South, and Central America are gathered here in Los Angeles to uh, compare mustaches. I don't know what they're... Were you invited to this, Guillermo? Yeah, but I couldn't go. I have to be here for you. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were invited to this meeting of all the leaders from all the countries in our region, and you decided to be here to protect me and to potentially save my life if it's necessary. That's right, Jimmy. You're first. Right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Gracias. <laughs> By the way, the, the president of Mexico is not coming. Uh, he decided to, to skip it in solidarity with the leaders of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua who are not invited because democracy isn't really their thing. But not having Mexico here is a huge blow because, number one, they're like our downstairs neighbor. And number two, they were supposed to bring the guacamole. So <laughs> now we have to go to Smart and Final. President Biden will join the festivities on Wednesday. And not only will Biden be hosting the summit, he will be our guest here on Wednesday night. Last night, we announced that our President Joe Biden will be stopping by. He will be here, which is nice, because it gives the gang at Fox News something to scream about all week. So to communicate with the American people, Joe Biden is sitting down with Jimmy Kimmel on Wednesday. That's the, the yeah. land of insanity in which we all live. No. Oh, I see. What I do is insane. You guys telling us we should arm PE teachers to protect kids. That makes sense. Tucker Carlson giving Vladimir Putin a reach around every other night. <laughs> Sane. President on a late night talk show, insane. Got it. <laughs> you all Donald Trump, you remember the guy who took his job as president so seriously he had time to meet with Kanye West and Kid Rock and Ted Nugent and Lil Wayne and the My Pillow guy who knows how many times and also watch TV all day? Well, this is what Trump is busy with. He posted on his imaginary social media site. Cash Patel wrote the best-selling children's book in the country. Not even top five, by the way. It's number nine. I looked it up. The Plot Against the King, which I recommended two weeks ago via Truth Social, telling our youth the Russiagate story. Google just banned his book's entire ad campaign. Let's put this amazing book in every school in America. Hey, right, let's, let's seal up all the doors and fill the schools with this amazing book, which stars Chubby King Donald and his wizard assistant, which is the author himself. He made himself a character in the book with Trump. <laughs> this guy, Patel, worked for the Trump administration at the Pentagon. I looked him up. His Wikipedia photo is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's like... <laughs> like they surprised him in his bedroom or something. <laughs> and if you're wondering who would publish a book like this, it is a conservative children's publishing group called Brave Books. This isn't the only Trump book they've published. The list is bigly, including um, The Very Hungry Fatter Pillar, <laughs> The uh, Berenstain Bears, Silence of Hooker, <laughs> How the Grinch Stole 11,779 Votes <laughs> in Georgia. <laughs> I Chopped Down the Giving Tree. One fish, two fish, filet fish blue fish, and <laughs> where the wild things were before my stupid son shot them. <laughs> so they've, they've carved out a niche. In London over the weekend, they had a big to-do for Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, celebrating her 70th year of kicking ass and taking names over in England. <laughs> the Queen, I think, has had enough of these jubilees because she did not appear in person. Instead, she appeared via hologram. They created a special hologram <laughs> In the window of a 260-year-old golden carriage, that is a hologram of the queen alongside, um, you can see here, Tupac Shakur. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> People were waving at it. <laughs> the crowd saying, God saved the queen as the hologram passed them by. As at this point, God must be like, enough already with the song. I'm doing it. She's 96. Do you not see me saving the queen? <laughs> you know this guy, uh, Louis Gohmert? He's a representative out of Texas. He's, uh, this statement it used to be the kind of thing that could ruin a person's political career. But now that we've been maggotized, it barely even makes a dent. 
Gohmert is upset because some of his fellow Republicans are getting hit with contempt charges for refusing to cooperate with the committee investigating the insurrection on January 6th. And, they're, and the, what he's upset is they're not even allowed to lie about it. We have a two-tier justice system. Uh, if you're a Republican, you can't even lie to Congress or lie to an FBI agent or they're coming after you. They're going to bury you. They're going to put you in the D.C. jail. That's right. You can't even lie to the FBI anymore. Is this... <laughs> it's outrageous. I guess, I don't know, at least... <laughs> At least he's not lying about how upset he is about not being allowed to lie, I guess. Small victory. The good news is he's on the Judiciary Committee. Louis Gohmert, by the way, is the same guy who suggested we move the orbit of the moon to fight climate change. He's not the sharpest pencil in the game. The sharpest pencil is the one he jammed into his brain when he was 10 years old. <laughs> Dr. Oz, by the way, in case you haven't heard, is officially now the Republican candidate for Senate in the state of Pennsylvania, which means we're now one step closer to having a U.S. senator who squeezed my balls on television. <laughs> and your balls. My balls, too, yes. That's right, yes. <laughs> and, and <he> was... <laughs> I'm not sure why we're applauding, but... Um, <laughs> Dr. Oz barely squeaked by his opponent, opponent David McCormick of uh, Pennsylvania. He beat him by 991 votes. McCormick conceded even before the recount was finished, which, wow, a Republican conceding in Pennsylvania, Trump is not going to like that at all. And now Dr. Oz will face the Democrat, John Fetterman, who looks like he eats two Dr. Ozes for breakfast every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Oz is now backed by Donald Trump. In the good old days, he was backed by an even bigger name, which was Oprah. Oprah, um, you know, gave him his show, and but now it would seem she has some regrets about this monster she helped create. Hi, everybody. 19 years ago, I introduced the world to Dr. Oz. He made more than 60 appearances on my show. I made him a household name. I f***ed up. <laughs> Holy f did I f*** up. I just wanted him to teach us what our poop should look like. My focus is to do what President Trump endorsed me to do. And now he's a first-class head. Do you want to fire Fauci? <laughs> I thought that would get you worked up. Oprah, sorry, everybody. I owe you each a candle and fuzzy pair of slippers. I'm really sorry. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and I approve this message. We still have Gail. Well, well you go, Gail. I, maybe Gail will run. All right, well, now uh, we have something that has nothing to do with anything at all. There's a, uh, a thread on Reddit I've mentioned before. It's called, What is this thing? It's um, for the identification of mysterious objects. People will post pictures of a thing. They don't know what it is. And then other Reddit users will chime in and help them figure it out. So it's fun. So we took some of the photos that were posted on Reddit, and we went out onto Hollywood Boulevard to see if folks walking by our theater could identify them. And it's time once again to play What Is This Thing? Oh, wow. I didn't know you'd practice that. All right. <laughs> Uh, here's the first thing, and let's see what people on the street... You see the thing? Okay, take it in. Wood handle, metal wrap, and rivet it to the handle. Possibly could be a missing piece. Not sure. W-I-T-T. -T. Uh, let's see what people on the street think. What is this thing? Okay, well, it looks like a gardening tool. Mm hmm Like, to kind of, like, rip out plants, maybe? To, um, to, to... A can opener. Uh, it looks like a shovel. Okay. Like some medieval shovel or something. For taking pears off of trees or apples off of trees. Okay, we did not get a consensus from the street, but what do you, the audience, say? One of those answers is correct. Is it a gardening tool, a can opener, a medieval shovel, or a fruit picker? Fruit picker. <laughs> Everyone says fruit picker. Let's see uh, if you're right. It is a antique can opener. <laughs> they had cans back then. <laughs> no, no cans. Just openers, but in case... They had openers in case someone invented a can. <laughs> all right, here's the next thing. All right. You see it? Analyze it. Dark gray soft rubber about the diameter of a nickel, six inches long. Let's see what people on the street say. Maybe uh, a bullet holder? A bullet holder. 
Could you slide a bullet in there? I want a long one and hold it in there. Probably like put your pen in there or something like a pen carrier. Um, a cast for a cat. I don't know, some sort of penis protector? <laughs> all right, all very interesting guesses. Uh, what say you guys? Is it a bullet holder, a pen carrier, a cat cast, or a penis protector? <laughs> I feel like you just wanted to yell penis at me. <laughs> all right, well, let's see. It is for a uh, curling iron. It's a curling iron. Are you serious? Yeah. I should know. Oh, all right. Well, it was none of the above, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, next thing is a small metal handheld tool, less than 12 inches. Okay. I feel like I've seen those. One of those little things that you go ping, ping, ping. A tuning fork? Yes, tuning fork. I just like read a book about this. Um, like a tuning fork? Uh, a potato peeler. A potato peeler? All right, is it a tuning fork, a tuning fork, a potato peeler, or a potato peeler? All right, well, I, don't, I, I feel like it's none of those things, but let's find out. This is a horse speculum. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it goes inside the horse's ass? Hopefully not, because it goes in the horse's mouth. Oh, so my, my bad. Let's my hope bad. they don't also. My bad. Well, you can get confused, you know, because one's on the, they're both on the end. Um, all right, last item. Uh, okay, now I know what this is. Let's see if they do. Something that goes up some kind of cavity and then you just open it and just opens it up or something? What kind, kind of cavity? Of, I don't know, anal? I would maybe say a marshmallow roaster. Uh -huh. Oh, is it like Angry Birds? You know, Angry Birds and stuff. You put the rubber band on that part, you just swing it back. Oh, so like a slingshot? Yeah. I don't know, but the top kind of looks like those things you see at the OBGYN. It's for like, <laughs> like opening the cooch. All right, well, this is quite a group. What, the, what do you guys think it is? Is it an anal opener? <laughs> A marshmallow roaster, a slingshot, or the other thing that I'm not going to say. All right, well, we're mixed. This is a tool for killing eels. Well, I, look, be honest. Don't get mad what? at me. I'm just Think telling you. What, what, what black person you know kill eels? I don't know anybody who kills eels, regardless. <laughs> we don't kill eels. Well, who would go in the water and just kill eels? I don't know. Do they eat it, I guess? I'm We're not, not sure. killing no eels. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, well, we learned a lot, I think. We learned about people and we learned about things. And thanks for playing What Is This Thing? Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.